Hey YouTube. Well, some of you have seen this picture before. This is a picture of the uh, edge of a sunspot on the sun, of course. And it is common knowledge to every man on the planet that our sun is a nuclear oven comprised of hydrogen and helium burning uncontrollably. Now, I'll hold to say that that is a lie, like so many other things is a lie regarding NASA. And I just watched the uh, BP Earthwatch uh, video regarding this phenomena, that there is an object above the north side of the sun, which is looking very peculiar and he don't know what it is and I don't know what it is and I'm not going to speculate in what it is at all but I am speculating in NASA's lie about that the Sun is a nuclear furnace and it's due to self-destruct in some 4.5 billion years and the Sun is now 4.5 billion years old so it's at the middle ages uh, excuse me you're nothing but men okay and reality is you don't have a clue about the origin of our universe or maybe you do but you lie about it because you know the truth that's the question but this is an, a rim this is the sun's surface and in here is the uh, spot itself in this area so there's nothing here showing and as you already can see now this looks very strange doesn't it Oh yeah, it's going to become much more strange now if we zoom in a little. And let us go to two times soon. And you already see that there is patterns beginning to show here. We got squares, we got lines, and we got distinct patterns of angles in this weird looking picture. So let me zoom in a couple of times more. Let's do it to there. That's pretty close enough for you to see that there's something not quite adding up here according to NASA's explanations about the sun. As you can see on, on the picture here, it kind of looked like a piece of woven cloth that you're looking at in under a microscope if you like. You can see all the lines, you can see how they're connected to each other, you can see how they are angled to each other. It kind of looks like a tubing of some sort. And we got something floating in the middle here and it's kind of like a little bay going in and this is just floating for itself and we have this two line square there and we can go a little closer so you can get an idea of it. Uh, I must give the credit to a uh, light reader who actually picked up this picture from, uh, from NASA. And he is explaining that this is the outskirts of a sunspot on the sun. And as you see, it actually looks like a factory of some sort with a lot of tubings where various chemicals or whatever could flow around in them but still I don't think it's like that but it looks like tubes indeed it looks like tubes and I have absolutely no clue of what this is and what the Sun is uh, comprised of but I believe and I strongly believe that our Sun and its interaction with planet Earth has something to do with induction. And you probably know uh, what an induction stove is. And that is a stove you have in your kitchen that turns off when you take the pot off the plate itself. And when you put the pot black on the plate, the induction occurs and it starts heating up the water or the skillet 
It's called induction, and that's how I believe that the Earth and the Sun is interaction, interacting with each, with each other through introduction, and yeah, induction, and not as a nuclear furnace. You have to look at this uh, terminology that they have. That out in the universe we have temperature that is below absolute zero where the sun don't shine. In the background in the universe it's absolute zero. And it's minus 275 degrees Celsius. I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit. That's kind of irrelevant because that is extreme cold. But the sun is 90 million miles away from Earth, according to NASA. And that is 149 million kilometers in European terms. So the sun's rays and heat are supposedly from such a distance, traveling such a long distance in absolute zero temperatures. Now, logic will tell you, but that can't be, because then the heat would never get here, because then the absolute zero temperatures would have cooled down the sun's uh, heat long before that. And you have to imagine how big the universe is compared, uh, according to NASA. And the sun is, according to NASA, a tiny little thing compared to other suns they say they have found out there. So, the overwhelming power in our universe, in our outer space, is absolute zero. It is so frigid cold that you would become freeze-dried if you came up there without a spacesuit on to keep you warm. You see, that sounds a little ridiculous, doesn't it? I think it does. The sun's heat would never reach planet Earth. But again, I believe it has something to do with the interaction or induction between planet Earth and the sun itself that actually administers that heat the sun is giving us here on planet Earth. And I find it hard to believe that ultraviolet light comes out of something which is burning ultraviolet light comes out of something which is electric such as a welding arch on a welding torch ultraviolet light comes out of that when you are welding two pieces of steel together and if you don't protect your eyes you will actually damage your eyes and you will also damage your eyes if you keep looking up at the sun because it's so bright such as the welding arch you get my point. You don't get ultraviolet light out of a nuclear furnace. You get ultraviolet light out of electric current. But again, back to this surface here. As you see, there is absolutely a pattern here. And if we were thinking about that this is a flaming inferno, you wouldn't get straight lines and angles. You will have something which is intermixed with each other. Just think about the flames of fire when you're sitting and making marshmallows. That they're not squares. No, they're kind of like this. Curvy. And zigzagging upwards and licking up into the sky. That's how flames appear. And if the sun is flaming, well then it it would not have such a surface which is very strictly in squares very strictly and just take a look at it just take a look at it it's, it's, it's just pure logic I don't even have to look up in a book or come with some scientific explanation for what I'm seeing because my eyes are not lying to me these are squares there's a very intricate pattern here, which you would not get from a fr flaming inferno. It would be impossible. Flames are random. The sun's flames should be random, but they are not. How it works exactly, 
I don't know, but I believe it works through induction, a relation between the Earth's core and the Sun itself. That's how I believe it works. I can't explain exactly how, but that's how I believe it works. It's an interaction between the Sun and the Earth. Electrical interaction and not a, a, a nuclear interaction. But as the father of all lies, Satan is, who is also running the show at NASA, everything is about death and destruction. Nothing is about forever. Well, he is the Alpha Omega, right? From the beginning to the end, and he's eternal. So there is something which is eternal, but not according to Satan. Everything has an end. Well, that's what he wants you to believe. He don't want you to believe that you are something special. And as I certainly don't want you to believe that you are something special and you have a special position here in this little universe that we are living in. Our universe is not 15 billion light years big. Come on, people. You would never see the light from the stars from such a distance. Now, listen closely. The closest star is Alpha Centauri to planet Earth. According to NASA, 4.5 4.9 light years away. Now take a flashlight, a Mac light, super bright one, let's just say it's 2 million candelas. You put that in a tree on a branch tied up with some gaffer tape and you are on a field which is a couple of miles long and you start walk backwards and you keep your eyes on that light, right? You will quickly find out that that light becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And three miles down at the end of the field, you might have a little difficulty just to, to scope it. It would be extremely small little spot of light that is coming. Now multiply that out to 4.9 light years away. And given that our light according to NASA, is traveling through electromagnetic fields, being influenced by black holes, being influenced by other stars on its journey. And light can be bent because of that. Do you then believe that you would see light coming from a star which is 10 or 100 million light years away? As they say, the stars in the sky that you're looking at at night have such distances to each other or to Earth. And the distance between the stars in the star sky are millions of light years apart, but they just form a picture. Come on! Do you believe in that? I don't. It is one of the biggest lies. You would not see the light from such a distance. Come on, lose your logic sense if there's anything left of it. It cannot be. It cannot be. The distances in our universe are not that big. And our stars are much, much closer than you think. Oh yeah, they are. And they are for us to marvel about, created by our Lord. To look up and gaze and ask the question, Who are we? Why are we here? And what is all this? And every time you look up at the sky, when the stars are out, you're looking towards our Lord. You're looking at home. You're looking for your home. Very smart trick. You're looking home. You're looking towards your Father. Well, Satan is not in heaven. He's here on earth to devour anything he can meet on his path. And he is furious because his time is short. But just here in the end, before I sh shut it off, just look at the patterns. Just take a look at them. Don't come and tell me that it's flames. It is not. The sun is electric. And there's no question about it. It is some sort of mechanical electrical device that is providing us with light providing us with life 
and serving as an existence of living things here on planet Earth. It's obvious. The sun is electric, not nuclear. God bless you.